Okay, so, okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, let me just um, go a little before I discuss them because I have a, a small, uh, sorry, a disclaimer, okay, about the method. So, this method is a heuristic one. I mean, it's like a conjecture that we are making that the homogenized problem or the limit problem solves this, this um, equation. So, but not a rigorous one. It may be not optimal and perfect because someone is asking earlier, why do you have to make the ansatz look like that? Why not uh, and in some other forms? Why, that's, I think that's the question of uh, earlier. Why is there a why? Why not X only? Okay, so <laughs> why is there a Y? Okay, so I think that's the that's um, the 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 multi-scale asymptotic expansion method is about being a heuristic method. So we we are not proving yet that really uh, the limit problem or the homogenized problem is the u zero earlier, which solves that differential equation. So later we will show that. So. I don't know if uh, uh, before they experimentalize on this is the nice formulation. Maybe, maybe they make this conjecture before that this might be the formulation that will work or the expression that will work, the ansatz that will work. Okay, so that's the disclaimer for this um, method. Okay, let me go back to uh, what we want to show now. Okay, okay, so again, Sorry, again. So um, this expression that you have seen earlier, which we used to solve for u1 in terms of u0, okay, this expression involving omega i, is called the cell problem. And as you can see, this happens only in capital Y. There's no x. It's on the reference cell. That's why it's called the cell problem. It does not involve x, okay? On the other hand, the homogenized problem, we again write, okay? It's the problem with uh, this differential equations, uh, differential equation, um, which involves u0, and as you can see, it only involves x. And of course, a asterisk only depends on y, okay? And so, I have the following remarks. So the cell problem allows us to solve u1 in terms of u0. The homogenized problem gives the equation solved by u0. The diffusion, the diffusion tensor A asterisk does not depend on x. Okay, it only depends on y. On the other hand, the functions omega i in the cell problem are what is known as the correctors. Okay, so those are the components of what we had discussed earlier. Okay, any question regarding these remarks? Because we have some questions to answer next about this cell and homogenized problems. It's okay, I can move, move on. All right, so our questions about the cell and homogenized problems. So first, is the homogenized problem well posed? And what can be said of A asterisk, our effective diffusion tensor? And next, is the cell problem well posed? And finally, what do the correctors mean? Okay, so those are, I think, uh, good, good questions that uh, we want to ask. Okay. So we will answer the questions in reverse order. First, we tackle the correctors. <laughs> okay. So the correctors. So we know that u epsilon is approximated by u0 plus is of order epsilon, right? As we have seen in our computation. And uh, we know that u1 is given by that expression. And so, it means that the difference between u epsilon and u zero is this expression, right? 
So meaning that the heterogeneous solution versus the homogeneous solution, the, the difference is this expression, which depends or which shows no, that the amplitude is epsilon, okay? And we have some omega i, some profile omega i, and then it is rescaled by the derivative of u0 with respect to xi. So those are our remarks. The correctors omega i measures the difference of the heterogeneous, that's u epsilon, and the homogeneous solution, u0. And more specifically, the solution u epsilon, so it's, it oscillates with an amplitude of epsilon and with a profile omega i scaled by our uh, partial derivative u0 with respect to xi. Okay? So that is the role of the corrector. So that's the question, that's the answer to our last question. Okay, so next, our next question. The solvability of the cell problem. Okay, so the cell problem is given by that expression where omega i is, uh, we say that there is a solution in H1 pair, a uh, periodic uh, function in Y. So um, earlier, Professor Donato discussed the variational formulation. And so we do the variational formulation of this equation to solve or to find the weak solution, okay? So the variational formulation of the cell problem is this one. Okay, so how, how did we do that? What we do is we multiply both sides of the equation by phi, where phi is in H1 pair, okay? And we have that expression and you integrate by parts, of course, okay? So you can express that in, as an inner product or a scalar product, okay? Okay, so multiply both sides by phi and then integrate by parts and express it as an inner product or scalar product. Okay, so um, I think this will be, can be an exercise. It can be shown that using our assumption on A and the lux milligram theorem that this uh, our formulation has a unique solution in the following Hilbert space. Okay, so I think we can do that uh, uh, later. Yes, uh, uh, the Professor Donato will talk about it tomorrow, actually. Okay. Okay, and that's it. The, the solvability of the cell problem. Okay, it has a unique solution in this Hilbert space. Okay, and I continue. Okay, anyway, they are still copying. <laughs> I think uh, we can do lux milligram later, okay? Maybe for the groupings, because they have to, I don't know if they are all familiar with uh, showing bilinear forms or, okay, and other conditions of the lux milligram theorem. Yes. Okay. All right. So we move on. The next question is what can be said of A asterisk? Okay. What's the character or the property of A asterisk? Is it also positive definite? Is it also bounded? Okay. So it's not uh, so um, trivial. Okay. So again, uh, we have this. Uh, for um, variational formulation of our cell problem, we will uh, use this for our um, diffusion tensor A asterisk. So what you do is, or what we do, is we take a test function, uh, phi, let us say it's omega k in the previous variational formulation, okay? So omega k is a test function, and so um, using some properties of the inner product, Okay, so substitution, and then some properties of the inner product. Are you familiar with inner product, scalar product? Okay, so there's no problem. 
so some property of the inner product. So we'll have that. And uh, from that, because, uh, we need that to show, actually, that um, our diffusion tensor, the matrix, is given by this formula. So how? We will use that uh, equality or equation. So first, so if we start with the first uh, Remember the definition of A asterisk earlier? It's given by the first line, okay? Or uh, earlier, okay? So we can write it in the form. So let us uh, introduce EK and uh, EJ. Okay, so from the first line, you can introduce our EK and EJ in this form. You'll get the same, okay? Okay. And, of course, you can... Okay. Okay. But from the equation, uh, yeah, this equation. Okay. You have here the same. Okay. So, because that is zero, I can write it. Same, okay. Ah, J, yeah, because it uh, is. Uh, okay, all right, so we will use that to show that to compute for the inner product A asterisk psi, psi where psi is in Rn, okay? So using this definition, all right, using this definition, we can express A psi, the inner product A psi, A asterisk psi, psi in that form, of course, as inner product. And then by just substitution in this expression, okay, we have that. And uh, why is the inequality true? Well, this is a property of, uh, <laughs> okay. So what does this show, this expression, this inequality? It means your A asterisk is positive definite. And how about boundedness of A asterisk? Where does it follow? Where does it follow? Does it follow from the second equation that you can say that it's bounded and the property of A? Yeah, okay, from the property of A and, oh, sorry. Okay, so with that, 
being said, we can show, because of the property of A asterisk and using lux milgram theorem, that our homogenized problem has a unique solution in the Hilbert space H01. So that can be um, uh, an exercise also, okay, for, uh, for the group. Okay, and that ends the answer to the questions that we have posed. It's solvable, it is a unique solution, and it follows from the property of A asterisk. And of course, the Lux milligram, using the Lux milligram. Okay, so <laughs> that ends my uh, presentation with the multi scale expansion or asymptote expansion method. For my uh, references, you can check out the following um, references. Okay, so. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> is that correct? Yeah, perfect. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>